Yeah, sure. Yeah.
Sikhs. Um, there are orders of worship that you'll find in your Q-Reps that say faith on them. These will guide us through the entire liturgy that is about to follow. All the things we're going to be singing today come from the blue signals, which are right behind those orders of worship. And now, if you are able, we would invite you to rise and join in some prayer as we sing hymn number 524, I Love Thy Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph. 
like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that in turn that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves the great, great, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not reap their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate, therefore the prudent will keep sleep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God. Please pray Psalm 90, found in your reading inserts, in unison with me. So, so teach us to number, number our days, that we may have taught our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tear? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness and morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad of the measure of the days that you have afflicted us, and the years in which we suffer adversity. Show your servants who are works, and your splendor to the children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace and with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, 
Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious God, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of the topics of life that always seems to interest me is just the topic of the relationship between faith and science. And I was listening to a podcast recently where there was this powerful discussion uh, that came out of some words of the chair of the biology department at Columbia University, a man named Stuart Firestein. And he said, knowledge is a big subject. Ignorance is even bigger and a whole lot more interesting. And it led to this conversation about how science is not driven by what we know. It's actually driven by the missing pieces, by what we don't know. And it's that search for what we don't know, those missing pieces. And in that search, those missing pieces then become the very material from which new discoveries and new truth, firmer foundations upon which science uh, can grow and, and develop and expand are built. And for some reason, that that whole conversation that came out of those words really really struck me personally, not because I'm a scientist, I'm far from that, I'm a a priest and a person of faith. But it got me thinking that so often when I have encounters with people outside of kind of the normal church activities, the the pastoral conversations, uh, the people who come in to chat with me, it's often because they're dealing with some pieces that are missing in their box. Maybe it's a relationship that once seemed so put together and now some critical pieces seem to be missing. Or maybe it's just a sense of wholeness and peace that seems to be missing after a lifetime of struggling with mental health issues. Maybe it's a hole in our hearts left by grief. Or maybe it's just an existential crisis where we don't know what we're quite looking for, but we know we're looking for something. 
Now, I wish I could stand here and tell you that whenever people come to a priest as wise as I am, or come into the doors of a church looking for those missing pieces, not only do they find them, but they find complete and total peace and, and so much blessing and prosperity as a result. And, but the truth of the matter is, the prosperity gospel as it's preached by some is, is wisely not preached by us Episcopalians, and I'm grateful for that. Because, in truth, the gospel that stands at the heart of our lives that we proclaim from the heart of this space, Sunday after Sunday, doesn't seem to promise prosperity as much as it promises the cross and some empty pieces. And I've experienced that. People who have come to God thinking God would put and keep all of the pieces together only to run when some of those pieces fall or both are missing. I think back to a few parishes ago. I had a gentleman who plugged in wholeheartedly all of a sudden. We didn't just start coming to, to Sunday Mass. This was when I was in a Catholic parish, but, but came to most of the Masses during the week as well. I became a reader, got really involved in the men's group. And I learned from all of this that this gentleman did that because he was convinced that God had finally put the pieces of his life together. He had found the one whom he was going to marry, and it was a wonderful relationship, and he had found the job of his dreams. And he wanted to thank God for all of that. And about seven or eight or nine months later, he stopped showing up to church just as suddenly as he arrived. I'm pretty patient with people like that, so I gave him some time, and then I called to check in on him. And I got an earful from him about how mad he was at God and me as God's representative because the relationship didn't work out. The job had actually ended, too. And this was around 08 or 09 when the economy was really bad and he was having struggles getting any kind of nibbles for new work in his life. I wanted to be a priest to him, but he hung up on me. I've never seen or talked to him since. And I just actually felt sad because my first thought was, there's some really wonderful guys in the men's group who have lost jobs and gone through the dissolution of relationships who could probably have walked with him and helped him find some, some peace and some grace to maybe build something new from those missing pieces. And at that same parish, I had a woman who, who had this beautiful, simple ministry. She just enjoyed showing up to funerals at the congregation, just to be a presence of parish members of love and support, a big Catholic parish. But then, after that, she would just check in throughout the next year with the people who were grieving with notes and cards and messages. So simple. But the foundation of this ministry for her was built out of a missing piece she had experienced in her life, namely the sudden death from a massive heart attack of her husband. Missing pieces are a part of life. But within them, we can and do find a gift that's worth embracing, not just for science, but for you and me as well, people of faith. Because sometimes we come to discover that it's the missing pieces that really do become the material from which new and more firm foundations of life and truth are built. The first step in that, though, is coming to recognize that we all live with some missing pieces. Sometimes that's obvious, like when we lose somebody we love. It's obvious where the missing piece is and where it's coming from. Sometimes it needs to be pointed out to us, though, and that's not always that comfortable. But that was the work of the prophets, like Amos in today's first reading, who had to reach out to the people of God and point out to them what was missing from their lives that was preventing them from living on a firmer foundation of faith and life and relationship with God and with one another. For Amos, he was pointing out that there was a big missing piece in the people's lives, namely their complete disrespect for the poor and the vulnerable and the needy in their midst. But there were prophetic voices like Jesus as well in today's gospel, where this gentleman has this courage to come to him because he senses something's missing in his life. He's done everything right religiously, but still there's this missing peace, and Jesus tries to gently guide him to see that that peace that's missing is not something he can buy or own or possess out of his wealth, or even find in the independence his wealth brings, but can only find, be found by complete and total dependence on the one who was calling him. And in both cases, it was hard to hear that some pieces were missing. Prophets were rarely popular people because of that work of pointing out 
what was missing in people's lives. And we know in the gospel, the man went away, shocked and saddened, because he had many possessions. But then Jesus carried on that wisdom with his own disciples, talking about the pieces that were missing in their lives that they had let go of, houses and fields and family and friends and possessions, but reminding them that there was a power greater than all that that could, could build a more firm foundation upon which they would stand that would lead to life beyond imagining even a hundredfold. It's often the missing pieces that become the material for which God's able to make more firm foundations in our lives. Similar to that, that woman in my parish a few parishes ago in her simple ministry, I came across a wonderful nonprofit this week. It's called uh, Bluebirds in Blooms. It's in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. It was started in 2018 by two women who were having coffee, uh, Laura Hogan and Karen Woolridge. Um, and they were kind of florists, I think, but they were, they were just talking over coffee of a florist they knew out west in America who would um, have this kind of kind of practice of taking excess flowers or even flowers from weddings and funerals that weren't going to go to you. She would then rearrange them and just deliver them to people in nursing homes and hospice care centers. Because so many of our older sisters and brothers live with the profound piece of connection missing from their lives. They live with the sense of deep isolation. And talking about what this florist was doing out west, Lauren and Karen realized they found themselves inspired to, to do something similar in the Twin Cities. So they started that same work, replicating it there. And this began in 2018, and just a few weeks ago, they donated their 100,000 bouquet to somebody in a hospice uh, in, in the Twin Cities. All to spread joy where it's needed the most. And all of that work, the foundation of that was built from this inspiration to, to do something and with this missing piece that so many of our older and sister, sisters and brothers live with on a daily basis, the piece of, of connection and community and relationship. It's daunting whenever we come to find that some pieces of our lives might be missing. And they can bring us to some pretty nervy crossroads. But it's also there that we can and do find the treasure of this grace as our second reading celebrate, that's able to pierce to our very hearts and lay bare who we are just as we are, with some pieces together, some pieces not, and some pieces missing for a long time. And work with all of that to build a foundation that's more firm. So we can come to discover that gift, that we do find foundations that are more firm of life and love and gentleness and patience and hope and compassion and even truth about life and ourselves precisely when we recognize that we don't have it all together and that some pieces might be missing. It's then and there that we do find that gift at work that doesn't just build a foundation that's more firm so that we can stand upon it, but so that there we can find the strength, again, as our second week we celebrate, to boldly offer our lives with the pieces that are there and the pieces that are missing to a throne of grace and glory that longs to work with all that's there and even the pieces that we that might be missing build something new from it all. We rise as we're able to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Creator of the universe, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God from true God, true God from true God. We God to God. Through him, all things 
for the safety of all rescue workers in the area. Pat May writes prayers for Julia's mental and physical health, prayers for Jane and for Jim as they struggle with health issues too. Joshua asks prayers for the grace to enjoy autumn in God's creation. Barbara writes, my cousin Daryl underwent a double organ transplant. Prayers for a completed recovery would be greatly appreciated. And of course, there are thousands suffering on so many levels following the birth and Pray for them too. Stephen A. writes for calm and peace for the mother of a bride, for a friend diagnosed with breast cancer, and for focus and discipline. Shirley asks prayers for little Sophia, who's battling leukemia. Louise offers prayers of gratitude for a successful rummage sale at her parish. So grateful for the many volunteers. Penny G. writes prayers of thanksgiving that the granddaughter Whitney and Tampa came through the storm only with soaked carpets. Roberta writes, thankful that my niece Marie came through Hurricane Milton in Punta Gorda with minimal damage. Dean writes, prayers for Lori C, who is in the final stages of terminal breast cancer. May she and her family be comforted and supported. Prayers for Laura D, who is depressed with other multiple serious health concerns. May she find the appropriate treatment and support. Prayers for all the victims of the recent hurricanes, especially those who are missing, injured, or who have died. May they all receive the support and resources they need. Sarah asks us to continue to hold Erica and Leslie and the children in prayer. Erica is a former classmate of Sarah's who's been dealing with breast cancer for a while. And although she's a young mom, after several years of remission, she has been transferred to hospice uh, after a recurrence. Chris, you asked continued prayers for James, a longtime family friend, who is dealing with multiple complications after having part of his lung removed because of cancer. I invite your prayers and petitions, either silently or aloud at this time. Lift, lift up Frank and Jan, um, two people who are battling a very serious infection following health issues and medical procedures. Um, but they have continued to find strength and recovery. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain standing, to be seated, or to kneel, however you're most comfortable praying, to confess the sins of God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you.
Again, this is a celebration of Holy Communion in the Episcopal Church. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive. Everybody here is sort of familiar with Holy Communion. So again, as I always say, just follow. Do what the person in front of you does. So if the person in front, you got a lot of pressure. Uh, our offertory hymn is hymn number 341. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
and become subject to evil and death. You in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink, do it for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, 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 Christ is alive. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Luke and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are worthy to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy
please remain seated for our prayer after communion. And we pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the universe of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us through spiritual food in the sacrament of God's body of love. Since I signed the Lord of our own peace and grant us a second prayer and love of preserving with gladness and the of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. celebrating a birthday this week who would like a blessing? Is it Marshall? Yeah. Yes? The first is we have Women's Wellness Craft and Chat this coming Thursday, the 17th of October, in the Parish Hall at 6 p.m. Again, you don't have to be a crafter to come. You can just come. There's a great community uh, to just connect with. Um, but some people bring crafting projects. Um, some just bring themselves. Some bring a snack to share. But just bring yourself if you'd like to come. That's at 6 p.m. in the Parish Hall. Um, Again, uh, our Halloween celebration is fast approaching. I had the, the dates wrong and the, uh, the time wrong in the parish post because I read the wrong website. But it's actually not 5.30, it's 5 to 8 p.m. is trick-or-treating on Saturday, October 26th. Uh, if you're able to help in any way to set up, to serve, to clean up, there's a link in the parish post to email Christy. Thank you for the candy that's coming in. If you're able to donate some, that would be greatly appreciated. We'll also have hot cocoa to serve that day. Um, and stuff for parish members in the church courtyard. So please plan even on just coming and hanging out for a bit if you're able to do so. Also that same day, but early in the morning, um, I received an email from Hunter, who is, was our deacon here, you know, and celebrated his first mass as a priest. He and uh, his wife Elizabeth are going to be moving that day because um, he starts at a new parish in the Diocese of Chicago the following week. Um, they'll, they'll have everything packed up, but they're looking for anybody who might be able to help around 1030 in the morning just to load the moving truck. Um, if you're able to help, there's a link to Hunter's email in the parish post so you can get directions and details, but that's in the parish post. Uh, thank you for, to those of you who have already brought in winter clothes for the kids at St. Joe's Academy. Um, Christy and I were in Madison last night for the Florida Madison soccer game. I almost didn't have a voice today because I was yelling at the referee. Terrible, <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. Um, but it, it was cold, like holy cow, it's like fall now, so cold weather is upon us. I was underdressed for it, but still had fun because of my anger, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, the cold weather is upon us, so if you're able to, to pick up a, a jacket or some hats or some gloves, or if you have jet use ones that kids have outgrown or grandkids have outgrown, wash them, bring them here, they will go to good use 
um, at St. Joe's Academy this year. Um, thank you for helping with that for another year. The Nestling House is also going to be partnering with us again. They did last year for the first time, so they're going to be uh, taking up collections, which is really cool. Um, and just lastly, uh, it would be a help to me if you are a reader or interested in reading, sign up because um, it's been uh, several weeks now where I've had to find people on Sunday morning. That's not the worst thing, but it's more helpful if people who can read sign up. I can take acolytes whenever they're always a good help, but I'd rather have a reader over an acolyte. Um, it's just more helpful for the liturgy. Uh, so there are slots, I think, to the end of the year. But if you're able to help, that would be greatly appreciated. And then some really super good news um, about our solar project. Well, there, I'll share the, it's not bad news, but it's just me news first about the solar project. Um, our solar company, Full Spectrum, awesome. They've just been really stymied by the energies right now. Um, there's lots of bureaucratic hoops that Re Energies is making us run through uh, to move our meter, and the solar company is working on that. They're just sort of plodding along. Um, but it's my understanding that once that's done, the solar power, the solar company uh, should be able to complete the project in just a few weeks. Um, we were hopeful that they can start this month. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or be realistic. Uh, we'll keep you posted on it just because, again, they're running into some hoops that aren't necessarily unexpected. They had told us this from the beginning that the, the, the likely source of slowing down the project will be the energies, and that is, in fact, the case right now. So just hold us all in prayer and hold Brent at full spectrum in prayer because he's probably more pastoral with the energies than I, I'd be kind of like if I was with the ref at the soccer <laughs> Uh, but the really super awesome news is uh, that we just received an $8,000 grant for the solar project from an organization based out of Chicago. And because we're getting the money, I, I want to do this correctly. Um, it's called Faith in Place. Um, and it is a grant uh, that was generously funded by Jeffrey Jens and Ann Voice Clear. Um, and they give up to $10,000 of grants to faith communities uh, that are seeking to become more sustainable. Uh, Blaze applied, uh, he's now in Portugal, uh, but thank him when he comes back. Uh, he applied and we received an $8,000 grant. Our, our CEO <coughs> signed it last Sunday. Um, they, will give, they will give us an initial check for $6,000 and then they want to come up and celebrate with us when the project is done and then we'll receive another check for $2,000. Um, this is just awesome news because really what it means is thanks to the anonymous, generous donors, thanks to the incentives, and thanks to this grant, the, the total to the parish funds right now is less than $5,000 for this project, um, which is just amazing, which means the payback period is going to be even quicker. And Blaze had mentioned that when we had the parish meeting, that there are some grants we weren't eligible to, to apply for until we actually had a board agreement in place with the company, because they're not going to just give us money if we're just fundraising around. Um, so this is one of those grants, and what a gift um, that it came to be. I uh, shared it with the best read this Wednesday night, and uh, this past Wednesday, and now with you all. So I'm just really excited about that. Such, um, I don't mind coming to work and finding $8,000. Um, and that happened more days than it would be great. Thanks for all your prayerful support for that project as well. Uh, please come down to coffee hour immediately following the liturgy, and now please rise for your blessing. May the peace that passes understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 529 in the Blue Hymn.